Yo, what's good, juicers? It's Mr. Khan here, and I have two league starts for you in 3.16 that will transition into two different play styles in the Labyrinth for you to earn currency in Path of Exile Scourge League. We got two builds for you. One of them is the recent Ancestral War Chief Champion. That's this build here. We're leap slamming. Uh, we also have the old Wave of Conviction build, and I have a full write-up in Discord for you, and we'll get to it now. All right, so build number one here is the Ancestral War Chief Champion. Uh, we're using Leap Slam and Frost Blink to get around the lab. Uh, Frost Blink is an instant cast, so you can weave it in between Leap Slamming. We're going to be Leap Slamming anywhere from 3 to 5x attack speed. Um, so very, very fast. Very, uh, It's smooth once you get used to it. The leap Slamming is a little bit clunky at first, but it's really smooth when you get used to it. And it's very comfortable because you are going to be tanky as heck. We have around 6.5k HP with decent gear. Uh, with the new tree, we actually gained around 1,000 HP, and it's super easy to get the damage still. With this build, we're going to be leveling with I'm Exile's Shield Crush Gladiator. We do have the option of using the Darky X Zizzerin Toxic Rain Champion leveling guide as well. Both of these are going to be really tanky duelist builds. And we're not going for the softcore variants here because we really want that extra defense for the new Scourge mechanic. We also want to test ourselves and see how fast we can push into this Tribute Lab. Uh, that's personally going to be my League Start goal, is to try to push Tribute Lab in the first 2-3 to three days. Maybe I'll be able to get it past the first 24 hours. We're just going to see how OP this Shield Crush Glad really is. Uh, it looks really, really comfortable. Uh, my only worry is that I haven't ever leveled with Shield Crush or a Gladiator before, so I'm going to do a little bit of testing before League Start, and we'll see how that goes. Once you do level up with Shield Crush Gladiator or Toxic Rain Champion, you're going to run into a point where with, with Shield Crush you don't have to spend that many regrets, but with Toxic Rain it's, it's almost an entirely different build, right? So you're going to have to spend like 20, 30, 40... Uh, you, you have to spend a lot of regrets. I think it actually might come out to 60, 60 or so regrets because the tree is wildly different. Uh, regrets can be really expensive the first week, right? So I would only go Toxic Rain Champion if you if you plan to stay Toxic Rain for more than a week. If you're planning on switching over early, I would definitely try out the Shield Crush, Shield Crush Gladiator for Ancestral War Chief. We do have a Gift Lab Ready POB here. I have a video of the Isro fight. And I have a little bit of a write-up on why you should play this build with Crafting the Year. I'll go ahead and throw this in the uh, in the description for you. Uh, it's in my Discord. You can check out the 3.16 Build Guides channel in my Discord. Uh, why you should play this build. Um, I'm just going to read it right off. It's very tanky. We get 6 Endurance Charges. You can get this to 8 if you get one, uh, plus 1 Maximum Endurance Charge Rings. They're fairly cheap midway through the league. They're like anywhere from 5 to 15x per... That's pretty cheap considering we're going to be making really good currency in the lab. We're going to be making really fucking good currency. It will not be a thing to get that extra two endurance charges. It's going to be super easy. Uh, we're going to have 6 to 7k life. It's a really fast build with Leap Slam and Frost Blink. Um, it's a really chill build if you don't mind the clunky nature of Leap Slam. And the Isro fight takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of practice. You basically put down your totems. You cast your skills, you chat your your berserk, your focus, your blood rage, you jump behind Israel, you hug his ass, you hug his butt because he's gonna be shooting the green balls at you if you don't, uh, from the goddess's back. You double curse him, you can single curse him if you want to do like more of a budget build. Uh, but Whispers of Doom allows us to run two curses, it's really OP. Uh, and then we just sit on his butt. We sit on Israel's butt and let the totems do the work. We have the auto taunting from the champion. It's a really, really comfortable Isro fight. And for crafting the gear, it's super easy. We have we have Essences of Misery. We are just stacking mana regen across the board on the Blue Pearl Amulet base, on the Synthesis mana regen rings, or you can use just two-toned rings. If you can find 30% mana regen rings, though, it really helps your Berserk up time. And Boots, we're just capping life and res. Like, you don't even need movement speed. Get movement speed if you want to. You really do not need it. And for the axe, you don't need to craft some crazy axe. You don't need to be good at crafting. Just buy any decent axe. It can be linked. It doesn't need to be linked. Buy a decent axe and get an open suffix. You want to be crafting. You want to be crafting the double damage while focused suffix mod. And it will shit out damage, dude. It is insane. It is nuts how much damage this craft does. 
um, it'll completely carry the fight for you. I mean, four seconds of focus in Israel fight, the fight's over, it's done. It's GG, dude. It is so fucking good. And for Home Enchant, Berserk Effect, you can't go wrong with it. It's more cast speed for your Leap Slam, you take less damage when you're hit. Ber Berserk Buff Effect is one of the strongest enchants in the game, and we're going to be fully taking advantage of it. It even gives us a, a, a ton more damage, so it's just it's great for movement, it's great for defense, it's great for damage. It, it, it's the best enchant in the game, hands down, like one of the best, top top five for sure. Um, gloves, it's it's a little bit harder to craft these gloves. We are going to be using essences of insanity. The main thing is we want the faster attacks, um, more attack speed combo. Uh, so the gloves by default with any any essence of insanity. If you're on budget, you just use one. Use one, you hope you get lucky. Boom, that's it. If you get res in life, that's amazing. Open suffix, craft on, craft on some res as well. Um, but if you have some currency, you're going to craft until you hit the faster attacks, um, grants faster attacks, or any, any socketed skill is supported by level 20 faster attacks. I think it's a 1 in 60 chance of hitting that, and that'll give you an, a bonus attack speed um, explicit as well. So you get a little bit more. I mean, it's, it's, it's not really that much at all, right? You're, you're going to be leap slamming like a fraction of a second faster. But if you're an oiler, if you're a juicer, which I know you are, you're going to want to go for that. I think it's like 1 in 60 for tier 3, 1 in 40, or sorry, 1 in 60 for tier 1, 1 in 20 for tier 3. So um, if you have 20 insanities, throw them at it, get lucky, it's GG. Uh, but you do not need that. For the gloves, literally just throw 1 and hope you get an open suffix, craft on some some res, and you are good to go. Um, the transition to Uber, the transition from Uber, Uber to Giflab with the Ancestral Warchief uh, build um, like instead of having a five, five link axe, you'll get a six link axe. Try to go up for that, like 600 to 800 PDPS axe before you craft DD. Um, yeah, it, like <clears throat> since you're not looking for specific mods and we're relying on the totems, you can usually snipe a pretty cheap axe. Uh, maybe you can get lucky fossil spamming one or crafting a good PDPS axe. But the point is you do not need an amazing axe. One, Isero is not the hardest content in the game. It's not like we're trying to do... You know, any Maven, we're not doing any of the uber juiced up new content. It's just Israel. It's gift to the goddess, tribute goddess, you know, dedication to the goddess Israel. He is 30 million health, 30 million life per phase. You know, you don't need anything amazing. You don't need any 1300 PDP sacks because the focus craft will get your damage to an insane level. You take an 800 PDPS axe, you craft focus on it, it turns it into like a 1200, 1300 PDPS axe for the Isro fight. Focus, the focus spell, the focus tech is perfect. It is a perfect use case for killing Isro. It is perfect because all you need is four, four, five, six seconds. Your focus is going to, focus is going to be up for the majority of that if you time it well. It is, it's, it's amazing, right? So for gift labs, you're going to want to push 5k, 6k life. You're going to, it's going to be so easy to get 90% fizz reduction in this patch. It's going to be so easy because of the armor buffs. It is insane. And we have so many endurance charges. Capped res is not a problem. We're going to be running double curse. It's super, super easy. And uh, you're going to want to try to push for like a double pride watcher's eye. Double pride is, is going to be so much damage. Like double damage, attack damage. Um, pride watcher's eye will be a huge boost. All right. So moving on to number two. We have the OG, the wave of conviction. Phase run, berserking, reverse chilling, and occasionally charge dashing when you get stuck on ledges or mobs. Uh, we have the Pathfinder build here. Toxic Rain Pathfinder is how you're going to level it. You can go Raider Toxic Rain. You can go Pathfinder Toxic Rain. Uh, Survival Instincts just got nerfed. Um, it's still it's still amazing. 50% flash duration is insane. It's so good. Um, Quantrix Raider is a super tanky, super fast build. You can cater it more towards softcore if you want, or you can just be a sturdy dude running through softcore like a Giga Soy, Giga Chad, and... I mean, it's an amazing build. Quantrix is an amazing guy. He's an amazing player. Follow his build. You're going to be so fucking solid, dude. Let's see. Like Pathfinder, Transition. Uh, if you go Pathfinder instead of Raider, uh, like Quantrix is a Raider build. There are plenty of good Pathfinder builds. Asmodeus did an amazing TR Ballista build in 3.13. Crouching Tuna did a build in 3.15. All doing Toxic Rain Ballista. Ballistas are amazing. You don't have to. You can go self-cast if you want. Um... 
but however you want to play toxic rain you can play it it's going to be a pretty simple transition but if you go pathfinder it's less regrets if you want to spec over like day three day four when you're playing wave of conviction with phase run berserk reverse jail it can be really pricey week one to swap over it's usually four to five x around day four to five is how i remember it because the last two leagues, I always swap at day four, day four, day five to Wave of Conviction, and it's always four to five X. And that's if you want all the bells and whistles. That's if you want mana regen gear. That's if you want your transcendent spirits. That's if you want like decent gear to get into Uber Lab and run fast, right? You can swap over if you don't want the, to reach the CDR limit for like permanent up uptime on your reverse chill, or if you don't want to run super fast or you want to not run berserk, you can swap over for for cheaper too. Um, but Toxic Rain is just going to be really comfy for lab running the first couple weeks, first like one or two weeks, maybe three weeks if you're a little bit more casual. That's totally fine. But the point is Toxic Rain Pathfinder, two wave conviction is the best leveling build to swap, right? So I do have the new 3.16 Gift Lab POB ready for you. This is the second or third iteration I've run through this. I've had my Discord uh, roast the build a little bit. Um, we're getting it to a point where it's like ready to present, right? And it's only going to get better because we crowdsource this build and crowdsource open source software and builds are way better than one dude just looking at a POV, right? So that's the beauty of the lab community. We all are invested in everybody getting faster, right? So join my discord. If you're interested in that, we are always looking for better tech. We are always looking to make this build better. That's why this build has survived league after league after league, right? I'm not the creator of this build. I am the curator of all of the good tech and the goodwills of the people who have come together and made this build so great, right? All right, so I also do have an imager here with a detailed write-up of the Isro fight. Um, the Isro fight is difficult, right? On this build, there are a lot of buttons you gotta press. You gotta do a armor swap, a helm swap. You gotta press... You know, throw down your traps, you gotta hit your flasks, you gotta arcane cloak, all your auras, your righteous fire, you gotta run away, you gotta phase run again for extra stealth, but all of that's written up in the imager right here, and I promise you, I can help. The lab community can help. You post a video and your POB in the lab help channel, we will help you get there, because insta-phasing Isero is really thrilling to do if you haven't done it before. Insta-phasing Israel with all of the traps is amazing. We have 29 traps, by the way, this league. is super big trap buff. Super fucking big trap buff this league. It's amazing. So this build, it's a thrill. Uh, why do you want to play this build? It's the fastest build in the game, chat. It's the fastest build, but it has a steep learning curve, especially in Gift Labs. So if you're just running Uber, if you're just running Uber Lab, it's a really chill build, right? But if you want to go for the Gift Lab, it requires dedication, okay? A lot of people try it and they get frustrated and they switch to Ancestral War Chief. That's fine. Some of them leave, leave the lab, right? Some of them leave the lab. But this build, if you can get it down, you will be getting more enchants per hour than any other build in the game. About 30% more an hour than the Leap Slammer. But you need the patience to learn how to run through the lab with Reverse Chill, with Berserk and Phase Run, and then doing the Isro fight. But we will help you get there, right? So... Mid-league budget, if you wait to switch to this, like after week three, after week two, three, it gets cheaper every week, right? 150C to 250C investment. But if you want to go for gifts, you need about 30X to 100X. If you want to make your build super comfortable, like a Lambo, dude, you need like 100 to 200X because you're going to be crafting both scepters. You're going to be crafting all your gear perfect, all perfect gems. Um, it, it makes it way more comfortable and you don't have to do a flash swap or an extra belt swap. But if you want to invest in this build, and I'm telling you, you can make a mirror you can make a mirror easy by day 16 to 20, two to three mirrors by day 30, and that's playing four days a week. I usually play four days a week, and it is easy currency on this build. Easy currency on easy currency on the Leap Slammer as well. But I'm saying, it might sound like a lot to invest 100, 30 to 100x in the build, but it will pay off. This build is insane. Lab currency is really, really good. Even though there are more people doing lab, a lot of people quit early. A lot of people just don't have the hustle. If you can put in a couple hours of lab, two to three hours, four days a week, you will make a mirror easily this league. Uh, like I said earlier, first week budget of this build is pretty steep. It just requires like a lot of weird uniques, a lot of cool interactions, but it's about 4x day four. You can probably do it a little cheaper if you, if you give and take a little bit. 
But why does it go from 150 to 150C to more investment? Well, we're going to be looking for a plus two amulet. Um, we're going to be anointing Whispers of Doom, running Ellie Weakness on hit on our Hiram Sorrow Gloves. We're going to get Assassin's Mark on our ring. Uh, we might not even need Assassin's Mark with the new Brit Dude, Brittle is so strong. We're going to be running Secrets of Suffering this league. Um, it's just insane damage. I don't really think... Like, you might not need Assassin's Mark, right? Uh, but we'll see. If not, we can run like Ellie Weakness Frostbite, and that'd be insane too. But Whispers of Doom is a gold, gold, gold anoint. It's really expensive. Um, plus two amulet. We're gonna be like you can make the amulet. It, it you'd just be woke orbing, right? So it's pretty. It's like five to seven x. Uh, plus four tabulas usually thirteen x. You can do a you can do a skin of the loyal too, but those are pretty pricey too. Especially a plus four like three G three blue uh, skin of the loyal are very expensive, right? Um, and uh, yeah, we're running enhancing powers on Div Berserk and Div Righteous Fire. And those are expensive, right? They got super nerfed last league, and they're expensive. Like, I run level 3s now because level 4 is a 10x. It's nuts. Yeah, it's really expensive. But all of these minor investments allow you to take away damage nodes from your tree and invest them into more speed, which is more profit per hour, and it's way more fun. So, yep, this is the Wave of Conviction build here. I have the POB, the videos, and if you want help with this build, Come into Discord, come into the Lab Help channel, and we will help you. But that's it for me, y'all. Uh, that is it for me for now. I will see you tomorrow uh, or today, whenever you're watching this video. Um, good luck in your league start. I'll be streaming. You can always reach out if you need anything on Discord. Yeah, good luck in Scourge.